Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. This week, Andrew interrupts his normal broadcast to teach on five keys to seeing transformation in your life, an overview of his course, A Sure Foundation, taught at Karis Bible College. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to a very special edition of the Gospel Truth Broadcast, and I'm really blessed to have Carrie Pickett with me again mm -hmm. today. All of this week, we've been doing special broadcast where we are encouraging yep. you to get a yep. free course from Karis Bible College. And uh, we're doing it to expose Karis to people, to encourage you to partake of it. And in a sense, what this is, is a free sample. If you ever taste and see that the Lord <laughs> is good, you're going to want more. And so what we're offering is my course on a sure foundation. And this is the very first thing I teach in school. It's really, really good. And Carrie is just such a blessing, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. So for those of you that don't know, Carrie uh, graduated from our school, yep. went to Russia for 16 years, 16. met her husband over there, helped us establish our school, our office, and put us on television over there. Yep. And you've been back here for what, six years? Yeah, six years now here in Colorado again with you. And Mike and Carrie are vice presidents of my ministry. They also oversee all of our Karis Bible Colleges, not only here in Colorado, but worldwide. Yeah. And I tell you, it's Karis is making a big impact. Amen. We, we just got back from Africa and seeing how the Word was changing so many people's lives. It absolutely was, it was thrilling because you just see that simple, powerful word changes people's lives. We had yeah. so many testimonies. And you know, I've been privileged to travel to a lot of our schools, probably mm -hmm. not as many as you and Mike have, but everyone that I go to, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we've got different people running it, and it's, but it's the word that's the difference. Yep. It's not built on a personality. It's not built on me or any one person. It's the word of God, and the word is producing fruit Amen. anywhere in the world. If you want something consistent in your life, no matter what culture, no matter what language, no matter what government system, the word is the only thing that's consistent because it's the only thing that has truth. And what we found is that in every single nation, because we've been to over 30 different nations traveling and teaching and preaching, it's the same exact lies because it's the same enemy. Mm -hmm. So it's the same truth that changes people's lives. I remember being in the backwoods of Uganda where people, there wasn't even electricity. There weren't toilets. Yeah. Um, it, it was primitive. And I heard people's testimony and they were talking about their life being changed through understanding <laughs> who they were in Christ. Exactly. They were saying the same things that happened to me 40 years ago. Yeah. And it's just the Word of God. Amen. It works anywhere. That's right. We're giving a little taste of some of these things. And what I want to share today, this is one of the things that I teach in this course on, on uh, Sure Foundation. And this is from Matthew chapter 11. And this is where John the Baptist began to doubt that Jesus was the Christ. Now, he had announced that Jesus was the Christ. He said twice, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And when the Pharisees tried to pit him against Jesus and say, Do you understand that Jesus is drawing bigger crowds than you are? He's baptizing more people than you've baptized. John said, He must increase, but I must decrease. John had an absolute certainty in his heart that Jesus was the Christ. But after being shut up in prison, we don't know exactly how long. It's at least six months. It could have been more than that. It could have been years. Uh, man, this guy who's on fire for God began to start reevaluating everything. And, and Jesus wasn't the way that most people thought he was going to be. They thought he was going to be the Messiah that came and overthrew the, overthrew the Roman government and established a physical government right then. And because, you know, the scripture says hope deferred makes a heart sick, I believe that John the Baptist began to doubt in prison whether Jesus was actually the Christ or not. Mm -hmm. And major crisis. Yeah. And it'd be like me after preaching for 50-something years wondering, you know, was this really true? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I couldn't even imagine going there. This was terrible for him, and he sent two of his disciples to ask Jesus about, are you the Christ, or do we look for another? And you know, Jesus' reaction, you have to compare the account here in Matthew and in Luke, and, I, and just for time's sake, we're just giving you a little brief taste of this. I'm not going to go and turn over and read all of these things, but again, if you get this free course that we're offering, this is one of the things that you'll be getting. But if you compare uh, Matthew's account 
and Luke's account of this, you'll find out that when these two disciples came and told Jesus that John the Baptist was struggling and needed help, he didn't even answer their questions for an hour. He just went about ministering to people, healing people, saw blind eyes open, deaf ears open, the lame walk, and even saw a person raised from the dead. And he told the disciples of John, go back and tell him what you've seen and heard. And blessed is he if he's not offended in me. And they left. And after they left, then Jesus said, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? Was it the reeds blowing in the wind? Those had been there for thousands of years and they never drew tens of thousands of people out there. What did you go out to see? Was it people that were dressed fancy? John the Baptist wore camel hair. And I remember uh, during the hippie days that they were, you know, trying to justify their lifestyle. And one of them even pointed out that nothing smells worse than camel hair garments <laughs> unless it's wet camel hair. And John spent most of his time in the water baptizing That's people. Funny. So anyway, he, it wasn't the fancy clothes. It wasn't the reeds. What did you go out? He says, among them that are born among women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. And yet he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. When I read this, I remember thinking, God, why didn't you say those things to John? Seems like that would have encouraged him. And I spent years being confused over this until one day I turned over to Isaiah chapter 35 and I was just reading through, wasn't even thinking about John the Baptist. And there in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 35, it says, when the Messiah comes, then the lame man will leap as a heart. The tongue of the dumb will sing. The uh, bl eyes of the blind will be open. And it prophesied what the Messiah would do. And what was happening was Jesus fulfilled all of these things that were prophesied. In one hour's time, he saw the blind eyes open, deaf ears open, the lame walk, and threw in raising somebody from the dead just so that there wouldn't be any mistake. You know what Jesus was doing? He was referring John back to the Word mm. instead of giving him some kind of an emotional hug, saying something complimentary that would have made him feel good. Yeah. And boy, Carrie and I deal with this constantly in our Bible college that people come, they come with all kinds of baggage. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking of one guy that was seriously, <laughs> we were wondering whether we should even allow him to stay in school. He had so much baggage, just full of hate and anger and all of these kind of things. And they come with all of these things and they're looking for some kind of an emotional deal. They're just looking for some temporary fix. And the answer is to point them to the Word of God. And not everybody wants that. They want a quick fix, something that's going to make them feel good, but that'll be over tomorrow. And then they'll yeah. have to have another fix. It's like a drug addiction or something. Yeah. And I think, you know, what happens in the world, and especially with believers, you want this, you know, oh, you're so, oh, you're right to be offended. And, you know, you're right to, you know, um, have this doubt and this anger issues. I mean, you, you're you justified to be a mess because of all the things that have happened to you. Poor little you, let's get an emotional hug, like you said, I like that. But it's the word that actually is what breaks those things. Say, no, you don't have a right to, to let your identity be what's happened to you or what you feel about you or what people have told you. Your identity is in the word of God. And that takes courage to get out of all the things that you've known and get into the word of God. And that's where real transformation and happens. And so if you come to Karis Bible College, you're going to get some tough love. <laughs> you are. You're going to hear me now. Carrie's nicer than I am, but you'll hear me say things you're like You're rubbing off on me, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say things like, pull your thumb out of your mouth and grow up. <laughs> you know, this happened to you 30 years ago. Why are you letting it still dominate and control you today? Now, Carrie will be nicer, but you are getting a little tougher. I am so. getting a little tougher. Well, just because it's it's the truth that sets us free. Yeah. You know, it's not somebody agreeing with your emotions and then trying to change you based off your emotions. No, you get into the Word of God, and it's truth that brings freedom. Not not all Not all of my feelings about what I think you think about me. You know, there's a scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 19 that says, Don't be like the Gentiles, unbelievers, that walk in the vanity of their mind. And then verse 19 says, Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Now, these are words that we don't use a lot today. This is King James I'm quoting. But what this means is they've gone beyond the normal use of feelings, which their feelings are good. If we didn't have feelings, man, life would be a mess. Yeah. And so feelings are good, but they've gone beyond the normal use of feelings 
TO WHERE THEY HAVE ENSHRINED THEM. I'VE ACTUALLY HAD PEOPLE TELL ME BEFORE THAT I KNOW THAT THIS ISN'T TRUE, BUT IT'S WHAT I FEEL. Yeah. THEY BELIEVE WHAT THEY... FEELINGS ARE MORE IMPORTANT THAN FACTS TO MOST PEOPLE. Yeah. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, MOST PEOPLE WOULD HAVE RATHER HAD JESUS SAY ALL THESE COMPLIMENTARY THINGS ABOUT THEM, BUT THEN TOMORROW THEY WOULD HAVE NEEDED ANOTHER EMOTIONAL HUG. WHAT JESUS DID WAS POINTING BACK TO THE SCRIPTURES. WHAT DID THE SCRIPTURES PROPHESY OF ME THAT I HAVEN'T FULFILLED? AND I BELIEVE THAT WHEN JOHN HEARD THIS, THE HOLY SPIRIT REMINDED HIM OF THOSE PROPHECIES WHICH HE WAS WELL AWARE OF. AND I BELIEVE THAT JOHN PROBABLY SAID, MAN, WHY WOULD I HAVE EVER DOUBTED? WHO ELSE COULD HAVE DONE ALL OF THESE THINGS IN ONE HOUR? WE TETHER OURSELVES TO SOMETHING, AND IT SHOULD BE THE WORD OF GOD. AMEN. BECAUSE, LIKE YOU SAID, WITH FACTS AND TRUTH, YOU CAN HAVE A FACT, AND YOUR EMOTIONS CAN BE ATTACHED TO THE FACT, LIKE THE DOCTOR SAID, YOU KNOW, YOU'RE GOING TO DIE. AND IT'S A FACT ACCORDING TO MEDICAL, BUT IT'S NOT TRUTH. Mm -hmm. AND that's, that's, what, THAT'S WHAT JESUS DID HERE. AND I REMEMBER HEARING THIS LESSON WHEN I WAS IN BIBLE SCHOOL. It CHANGED MY LIFE. GOOD. YEAH. I TELL YOU, THIS IS ONE OF MY FAVORITE THINGS TO TEACH, BUT YOU DON'T ALWAYS KNOW HOW PEOPLE RESPOND TO IT. BUT THIS, yeah. THE LORD SPOKE THIS TO ME. I COULDN'T, uh, I CAN'T TELL YOU IN A SHORT PERIOD OF TIME HOW THIS HAPPENED, BUT I WAS SO DISCOURAGED THAT I WAS SERIOUSLY CONSIDERING uh, GIVING UP, AND GOD JUST POINTED ME BACK TO THE WORD. AND THE WORD OF GOD IS THE ANCHOR uh, THAT KEEPS US FROM DRIFTING AND FLOATING. AND SAD TO SAY, MOST yeah. PEOPLE DON'T HAVE THAT ANCHOR BECAUSE THE WORD OF GOD IS NOT FINAL AUTHORITY IN THEIR LIFE. Yeah. SO WE'VE GOT TO CHANGE THAT. SO WE'VE GOT ANOTHER TESTIMONY COMING UP. Who, YEAH, who SO is THIS IS THIS is YOUNG GIRL, uh, RACHEL, AND JUST HER TESTIMONY OF JUST WHAT THE WORD OF GOD DID TO ANCHOR HER. SHE HAD SOME, SHE HAD SOME DIFFICULTIES. OH, MY GOODNESS. THEY WERE, THE DOCTORS WERE SAYING THESE THINGS, AND SHE COULD HAVE RELIED ON THAT, BUT SHE BELIEVED THE WORD OF GOD. SO WATCH RACHEL'S TESTIMONY, AND WE'LL BE RIGHT BACK. I WENT THROUGH A MAJOR HEALTH BATTLE WHEN I WAS 15. I BECAME LEGALLY BLIND AND PROFOUNDLY DEAF FOR ALMOST TWO YEARS. Uh, IT WAS DUE TO TOXIC MOLD EXPOSURE COMPOUNDED BY MULTIPLE SPORTS INJURIES. I ACTUALLY BEGAN MY JOURNEY REALLY STRONG uh, WITH TRUSTING THAT THIS WASN'T GOING TO BE MY NEW NORMAL. I WAS BELIEVING THAT EVENTUALLY I WOULD WALK FREE AGAIN, BUT I GREW WEARY AS ONE THING AFTER ANOTHER AFTER ANOTHER CHIPPED AWAY AT MY HOPE. AT MY DARKEST MOMENT, THOUGH, in the middle of that season, God spoke to me and He said, you can focus on everything that you've lost or you can start to dream my dream for you. Uh, he showed me a ministry of a ranch that was His dream. It was His dream for me. Uh, I started to share this with my mom and when I did, it just started this domino effect of favor and connections leading us to launch a ranch established to connect the broken and hurting youth with abused and neglected horses. In this environment, it was so beautiful, though, because the hope uh, was reignited in me uh, to become whole and fulfill my purpose again. I started to picture myself seeing and hearing and living without pain, and I began to actually speak it over my life. And that was where that critical moment God met me where my faith was. Um, infirmities began to fall off of me. My DNA was rewritten. My vision and hearing went back to normal. In April 2019, I learned about Karis through attending a musical performance, and it revolutionized my world. I completed my first year of Karis through distance education and my second and third years at the main campus in Wildham Park. God doesn't disqualify you if you're in process. He gave me the vision in the middle of my mess. And during my third year at Global Training School, I was actually able to relocate the ranch that God showed me in that vision seven years ago. Um, Eighth Mountain Ranch is the name. And I've used the truth that I've learned here in Karis to bring redemption and sanctuary to others who are in the middle of their messes and to give them the opportunity to have a new beginning in Him. Wow, that's awesome. I hadn't seen that testimony. That <laughs> was awesome. really good. And you know, the good thing is it not only did she get set free, but now she's ministering to other people. And this is what the Word of God will do. It'll take your attention away from just yourself and sitting there fuming over all of your problems that you've got, and it'll make you to where you're out to reach other people. You know, my husband always says that when, when you talk about spirit, soul, and body, and that teaching has transformed our lives, 
But when you look at it, the enemy's whole goal is to get you focused on the flesh, what you feel, what you see, what you experience. But the word is about getting you to see the mirror of who you really are in the spirit, who who God really is inside of you. And when that happens, then the overflow blesses so many lives. And you know, that's another thing you can learn from uh, John the Baptist right here in Matthew chapter 11, that you can get so focused on ministering to other people that you forget your personal relationship with God. Here was John, and I can just imagine this guy was a fireball, and man, he was out there proclaiming. I mean, he was bold. Duncan. <laughs> and after six months or a year or whatever period of time in jail, not being able to do ministry, you can get your identity yes. caught up in what you do, what you're called to do instead of your personal relationship with God. But see, the Word is always going to bring you back to personal relationship. And I believe that that's what Jesus did by referring him back to those prophecies. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember when we came back off the mission field, all of a sudden I, I, I wasn't a full-time missionary. And I had to, God had to say, hey, your identity is not you doing missions. Your identity is in me and abiding in me. And abide, th the very thing that took you over there has to be the very thing that keeps you here now in this new season of your I life. I remember when you and Mike first <laughs> came back, you were talking about going back all of the time. You were back, I think, just to have a baby, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then you were going to be gone. And I remember talking to you and saying something about, look, you don't ever have to unplug from this ministry. Yep. You're Amen. supposed to be hooked with us forever. Amen. And it's been an adjustment. But now yeah. you're reaching more people than I could have in than Russia. Than you could have ever reached in Russia. And that's when you when you make it about the word versus about your agenda. I think so many times people want to have God bless their agenda. God, you bless everything that I want to do and how I want to do it. And in my carnality, bless it versus, man, if you can surrender and truly like Galatians chapter 220, being crucified in the flesh so that the life you now live, you're living by faith. And he does something so much bigger than anything you and I could imagine. And I see this all the time, Carrie, in my peers, ministers, that so much of their identity is all caught up in how big their ministry is, how big their church is, how much money's coming in, or things like that. And those things are all necessary. I'm not saying that you don't use those things sometimes to gauge what's going on, but you can't build your mm -hmm. life around a ministry. Yeah. If you do, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. Jesus is the only thing that'll never let us down. And even those who aren't building ministries, but they're building their businesses and they're building towards or their what family. The, or yeah, what they've defined as the ultimate level of success. And what I love is that how the world defines success. You know, we, we can do, we can produce a lot in our own strength and talents and abilities, but then they pass away. But it's only in Him, abiding in Him, that we actually produce fruit. And He said that He doesn't just want us to produce fruit. He said He wants to produce much fruit so that He's glorified. How many times have you and I dealt with people that their kids get grow up and they leave home and they have this empty nest thing and they just their marriage falls apart, yeah. their life falls apart because it wasn't based on God. No. It was based on something else. And even children, as important as they are, even mate as yeah. important as they are, you mm -hmm. cannot make your life all about these other things. It has yeah. to all be focused on Jesus. I think that's why when we talk about foundation and, and the, the whole name of this course, Sure Foundation, when we talk about foundation, if you're going to build anything, it has to be built on the right foundation or it's going to fall apart. But then also, God's, God doesn't want to just keep us to our own limited, like this is your four walls and no more. I mean, God is so, He wants to do abundantly, exceedingly above all that we could ask or think. So when we have the foundation of the Word, that's where growth and multiplication and God doing all these amazing things in our lives actually happens when we have the right foundation. So if we don't have the right foundation, it's going back to that, especially if we're saying, God, I want you to increase. I want more. I want... You know, I want you to use me more. Well, then you have to get back and rebuild that foundation. Amen. Foundation is so important. When we had a ministry real young, we were uh, using another facility, another church that Mark Coward is now the pastor of, but uh, it, he wasn't the pastor at that time. But anyway, it was an old Safeway building and we rented space from him. And the foundation was bad. And the, mm. and the thing was actually falling down the hill and a wind blew and the ceiling opened up and dirt began to fall down. And I went over there and evacuated my people. And eventually they wound up condemning that building. And Mark Cowart came and told that story about how that, that building had to be totally torn down because the foundation was deficient. They probably had 20,000 square feet and they had to tear the whole thing down because the foundation was wrong. 
And that's yeah. that's what's wrong with most people's yeah. lives. It's yeah. not built on the Word of God. Yeah. That's what this whole story is all and about. And they want to see all these great things for their family and their ministry or their business and all of their dreams. But if it's not built on the right thing, then it's what we're doing is we're putting up walls and structure based off the world's concepts. And it's always going always to fall apart. It has no lasting power. And so I know that there's people watching this and you're thinking about, I wonder if my life is built on the right foundation. You know, even if you're asking that question, I can tell you that it's probably not. When you get the Word of God and it begins to be the absolute final authority in everything, you know it. This doesn't happen accidentally. It's not something that uh, you wonder if your life is based on the Word of God. It takes a deliberate effort. You have to pursue it in order to get this. And again, this is one of the reasons that we're offering this course to you as a free gift. It will emphasize these points that Carrie and I are trying to make. And I promise you, it would uh, light a fire on the inside of you. It, it, it'd make you mad or, or glad, one of the <laughs> two, but you won't be indifferent because we're going to emphasize how important it is. And just as Andrew was talking, I just really feel like there's some people watching that you've been struggling with your faith. You've been struggling. It Does it work? Is it real? Is it the right thing? You're getting pressures. Other, other people's opinions are telling you things. And you're like John the Baptist, and we want to bring you back to the Word of God today. And I believe that this course is going to really establish your faith because we have a lot. I have lots of people come and say, I, I'm not sure if I want to believe in God anymore. And the very thing that they're wanting to let go of the Word is the very thing that actually saves their faith. And mm -hmm. so I feel like if you're struggling today with your faith, then you're supposed to get this course specifically for you today. And I can guarantee you that if it wasn't for the Word of God and the way it's impacted my life, you wouldn't be seeing me on television. I remember when I first got turned on to the Lord, man, I was so excited. I had a zeal for God and I had a vision of someday reaching the world. And yet, there was no way that this was ever going to happen. And I remember kneeling around my bed. This is before I was married. So I've been married 50 years. This was over 50 years ago. And I remember kneeling beside my bed and praying and saying, God, how do I get from where I am to where you want me to be? And when I opened my eyes, my Bible was just laying there on the bed. I'd been reading it. And I heard the Lord clearly say, if you'd stick your nose in this book and not come out of it, it'll teach you everything you need to know. And that's literally what has happened in my life. Any good thing that's ever happened is because of the influence. Of course, it's God, but it's the influence through the renewing of my mind by the Word of God. Same thing will work for you. So how do they get this course, Carrie? So our Sure Foundations course, go to kariscourse.com. When you go there, you're going to be able to get the eight hours, this full eight hours of teachings going more in depth than what Andrew's been sharing, which is really, really powerful. So go in, you'll get those eight hours, plus you'll get the PDFs of that. So you have all the outlines to be able to write the notes, write all the revelations you get. You'll be able to download not only audio, but video, and you'll be able to take it with you as you're going about your life. And so check that out. It's for a limited time only. Um, uh, the reason we're doing that is so that you actually get up and get it done. Don't just be like, oh yeah, later on. No, it's today. Today, it's time to sow the Word in your heart. We would like to see tens of thousands Amen. of people take advantage of this. I promise you, it'd be a real blessing. So um, we want to encourage you to listen to our announcer. They're going to give you all of this information again. And please call her right. We have people standing by at our phones 24-7. And you can call. They can answer your questions. They can plug you into where you need to go to be able to get this. So please listen to the announcer and then call or write today and then join us again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Today, Andrew is offering you his eight lesson course, A Sure Foundation, free of charge. Simply visit the website at kariscourse.com and enter your email to gain free access. I wanna let you know that we are giving away a free Karis course. It's the first course that I teach in our curriculum in our Bible college, it's entitled A Sure Foundation, and it's a free course. It's a giveaway that we are giving to people just so that you can sample what Karis Bible College is all about. So you can go to kariscourse.com and you can get this free course that we're offering. It's an eight hour teaching. I promise you to be a blessing. Check it out. Do you desire to see growth in areas of your life, but every time you try, you become sidetracked or discouraged? Well, through this course, you'll discover God's roadmap for lasting transformation, growth, and fruitfulness. 
When you understand and cooperate with God's system, change becomes practically effortless. Learn the simple steps needed to establish your footing on the firm foundation of God's Word and start experiencing life as He intended. This powerful course is taught in Curis Bible College Year One and is changing the lives of our students all around the world. By signing up for free at CurisCourse.com, you'll gain access to all the course resources that a Curis Bible College student enjoys. You'll receive access to the video teachings, audio teachings, and the lesson outline PDFs. Discover God's path for you to experience effortless growth, transformation, peace, and fulfillment in your walk with God. This amazing offer is only available for a short time and is closing soon. Sign up for your free Keras Bible College course at kerascourse.com. We hope this resource is a blessing to you. Coming to Keras has been the best thing that has ever happened to me. I have been fortunate enough to know the Lord, to love the Lord, to know that I wanted to serve Him my entire life. But I felt the Lord calling me and beckoning me to come up higher and to just remove myself from all of the worldly distractions and so that He could speak to me and tell me what His purpose is for my life. So throughout year one at Karis, the Word of God has been sown into me, poured into me, invested in me, and it has truly transformed my life effortlessly. And now that the Word of God is coming alive in me, I am discovering who I am and what my God-given purpose is right here at Karis Bible College. You were created with a purpose, written in the heart of God long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. You were born for such a time as this, to be a disciple, to leave this world behind and follow Him. You were designed for a destiny, one that only you can fulfill. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We want to help you to know God, experience His unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. I've got some great news to share with you, and that is that we have now expanded our phone center hours to 24-7. Anytime you want to call us, we're going to be open to receive your calls. We've been expanding gradually, and this is a goal that I've been shooting at, and I'm excited because, you know, sometimes problems, needs don't just wait until business hours to happen. You may need to call in the middle of the night and we can now serve you 24-7 on our Andrew Womack Ministries helpline. 